Hey everyone. Um, what you're looking at here is a stripped down Singer Model 353 sewing machine. I have all the covers and everything off because uh, I just spent a few hours cleaning it, lubing it, um, adjusting the timing and the feed dogs, and uh, getting it all ready for sale on Craigslist. And I thought some of you might like to see what it looks like on the on the inside of this type of sewing machine. This machine is from about 1972. I believe it was made in France. In the United States, they call it the Genie. Uh, let me show you a little uh, part of the faceplate here. And some of you may have seen that before, definitely from the 70s, right? <laughs> Uh, so it's called the 353 Genie. Uh, the next year they came out with the 354, which was the same thing, but it added one more stitch. And uh, in Europe they sold this, especially in the United Kingdom, as the model 353 Starlet. Same faceplate, same everything, they just called it the Starlet instead of the Genie. So uh, let me start at the front end here. Um, it's, oh gosh, let me see if I can get some better light on it here. There, that's a little bit better. There you see the, the typical Singer setup there with the needle bar, uh, foot presser, foot presser bar. Mm, let's see over here if we can raise that. There we go. There's the lever that to raise the the presser feet up and down right there. I have the tension unit off right now, but it it mounts right here. I've got that off to take apart and polish the discs and so forth. But um, by the time they came to this style of machine, instead of turning the tension knob. There's a tension wheel up here. I see. Yeah, there. You can see the numbers there. And you just turn this wheel to increase or decrease tension. And uh, the way that that worked was when you mount the tension unit up here, the pin that's inside the Singer type comes right through here and rest against this piece of metal. And then as you adjust the tension, that piece of metal goes in and out, and that's what puts more or less tension on there. And while we're up here, you can see the belt from the motor. It's a belt drive to the main shaft which is really, really pretty, you can see it down in there, it's pretty, pretty thick heavy duty steel shaft and it's got the typical uh, concentric, mm, I don't know what that thing's called, disc or whatever, you can see the fork on it there and that, that's what goes down, the, the iron rod from that Fork goes down and uh, moves the levers for the, the feed dogs and stuff. And I'll show you that. You can see the gearing right there. See that dark gear? And see the see the worm gear, the steel worm gear with the new grease. And then that that whole bar is what goes across the top and works the mechanism and stuff for the needle bar. And down here, this is the needle position. Uh, left, right, and center, you can see it move that swing needle bar. This is uh, for your stitching. This was a straight stitch all the way to the left and then beginning to go up to your zigzag as you go to the right and uh, then that that's a stitch width too so a very narrow zigzag uh, kind of medium 
wider, extra wide over there. Um, let's see, this was for blind hem, zigzag, sewing. You can see it just kind of moved these nylon uh, spacers. That's what controls stuff for the blind hem stitch and the zigzag stitch and so forth. This is the reverse button. Push that, push and hold, it reverses, let it go, it stops. This was the stitch, this is the stitch length from about six stitches per inch up over, over 20 to the top. But where a lot of the vintage ones I worked with had a lever here, and you threw it up to go in reverse, this just has a push button. Uh, let's see, this is just the on-off switch. It turns the light and the motor on. There's the bobbin hook. I have the bobbin holder out. I have the feed dogs out right now. Justin and I got everything out. I spent uh, almost three hours just polishing all the metal on there. I'll turn the handrail and you can see the bottom foot going around. You've all seen that. The bobbin positioning bracket here. This is a little bobbin folder. You put the hollow type bobbin in there. Put that over the top to lock the way. Push it back and then put that in there. Bottom holder. Um, let's swing this around and look at the back end. It's a cute little machine. It's got a, it's got some nice features. Um, this is the hand wheel. And let's see if I can get close enough. You can see. Yeah, you see that little white round button with the bobbin symbol on it. When you want it to wind the bobbin, which is built into the top cover, you just push that in. You get it lock out. Then when you run the motor, the wheel will turn and the bobbin wheel will contact up here and wind the bobbin, but it won't move the needle bar or the uh, bobbin hook. And when you're done and you want to go back to sew, you just pop that in. So it's real, real easy. Push it in to wind the bobbin. Push it back to sew. Continuing around here, you see the nice motor here. I've got to look up the amperage on this before I list it for sale, but I think it's about a 0.6 amp, peaking up around 89, 0.89. Got a nice cog type belt. Put some new belts on here. Uh, it's very easy to, to adjust that and put the belt on. You just uh, loosen this main bolt here that holds the motor bracket and everything. And then there's a little one down there, a little screw. And then there's about an inch slot behind that bolt. So you just move it up to take the belt off and then slide it down and tighten it and to, to adjust the belt belt tension there. I got about three sixteenths of an inch of give. The little motor cover, motor housing there with uh, ventilation. There's the back of the light fixture. Uh, the back of the disc that as uh, you know triggers the stitching and the needle bar and stuff. You might, might, let me see if I can get a light in here. You can see the gearing and the concentric gear and fork from the other side, maybe. Let's see, can you see that in there? Yeah, so there's the gear. You just barely see that steel worm gear built into the shaft that turns these cams up here. They're not removable or replaceable cams for patterns. They're just the typical cam and the newer machines like that that, that 
when you move levers help you do the zigzag and straight stitch and so forth. Uh, here's the back of that uh, lever to raise and lower the feed dogs. And let's see, you can see the mechanism top of it up here. If I can hold it still, yeah. See it come up there. Let's see if you can see this. There's a, the lever action that moves that piece of steel I showed you earlier that pushes the pin into the tension. If we can raise that and see it. Yeah, you can see it move there. So that, that's why when you raise the feed dogs, it pushes that pin inside the tension, which releases pressure on the discs inside there, and therefore releases tension on the thread. So when you're threading, uh, you know, you have to have that open when you run the thread through the tension disc so that it, so that it gets down between the discs. And we're gonna come back around kind of the back side of the front there and see everything. Here's a back view of the bobbin hook area trying to get a little more light. Sorry, this is just my little work area of my condo. So there's some of my stuff. Here you can see the, the Q look at that Q tips and cotton pads that I Used the, that's what I went through to clean this guy up. And that's about average, believe it or not. And this machine wasn't too bad. But uh, especially here in Arizona where I'm at, that fine dust just gets everywhere. So, I've, I use TriFlow oil and clear synthetic grease on this. Most of my cleaning is done with 91% alcohol. Um, I, I, that's about all I try and use on anything. I don't want to get too many chemicals on here. Uh, let me show you the foot pedal that comes with this guy. Turn the light back over here. So, there's a pretty typical singer. Can be mounted under the table with a knee lever. I'm going to show you this. Uh, Show you where the cord, typical three prong. We'll plug it in. I thought I'd just run the motor a little bit for you, see how it looks and sounds. Get that plugged in. I'm just going to operate the the pedal by hand. See if you can. Whoop! See that We're running here? We'll start it going here. Whoop! And I turn it on. There we go. back here and you see some top action maybe. See the concentric going around, moving that fork up and down. You can see the cam spinning. See the vertical shaft and gear going down. There's another belt and gearing system below to run the bobbin hook and everything. Get over here and see the front end. Mm, turn that a little bit more, maybe. There we go. That nice, smooth. You can see the needle swinging, so I've got it set for a zigzag stitch right now. Bobbin hook going around. It's a nice, smooth running uh, machine. And, uh, when you put the covers back on, it's actually very quiet. It's a lot more quiet than my 300, 400, and 500s. So, well, there's the typical 15 watt light. And then here's the lower end. This is the end of that steel vertical shaft that goes on up to the gear next to that worm gear. This is the bottom of that fork on the concentric gear 
that rocks this arm back over here to uh, move the feed gears, the feed dog system, to get them going. And here's the nice uh, steel gear here for the belt going over to a steel gear for the bobbin hook. Uh, the older ones, of course, they put another vert, uh, horizontal shaft with metal gears, but on this, this later in the 60s and 70s, Singer had to go to belts to compete with the Japanese and German machines. This little plastic concentric thing is how you can loosen it and turn it to set the tension on this cog belt. And it's got about the same 3 16 quarter inch tension. Let me start it up here and you see it runs real nice. So there's the gearing from the belt. see the rocker arms moving the feed dogs back and forth. See that fork, what I call the fork shaft, the fork rod coming down and rocking that. And that's all, that's all steel. Everything there is steel. And you see it, uh, there's a little steel rocker arm up there with a concentric. That's all the, the feed dog, bobbin winder, or bobbin hook, and still a lot of metal in this steel. The the flatbed and the whole frame is a beautiful cast aluminum um, system here. They, they they hadn't gone to plastic bodies and stuff yet, so it's. Uh, It's a beautiful uh, aluminum, cast aluminum, the whole thing, the frame, this top, the head up here is kind of bolted onto the flat bed, but you, you still see their triangle engineering plan up here, and you see it underneath this stuff at the top, where this allowed them to go from iron to aluminum and keep the same the, the same strength in their machines. So, um, this little genie has a slip-on case that slips right off. And a lot of people say that this machine was the replacement for the 221K that all the quilters love today. The little black one from the 40s and 50s where the bed folds up here has a little black box you carry it around in. So this was a, kind of like the 1970s answer to that. And uh, in its day it was wildly popular because it's, it's a little bit smaller. And it's a uh, lighter weight like the featherweight, the 221K was. But it does uh, zigzag and blind hem stitches and stuff too, so it was a lot more versatile and, and still very well made. Uh, these belts last a long time. I, I took off the original belts, but the, really they looked fine. The machine wasn't used that much. They weren't worn down, but just because they were maybe 40 years old, I decided to change them. I got the two belts for 15 bucks. It took me about five minutes to put them on there. Everything else was real good. The, the timing to the needle <coughs> and the bobbin hook was off by about a uh, 64th of an inch, so I just filled around with it a little bit. And the needle bar was, was timing was just barely set off a hair's width. But since I got everything opened up here and everything, I figured I'd set it all up. And, you know, and do it. So it's a sweet little, you can kind of see that main shaft and worm gear turning in there, nice steel gears. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I just thought people might like to see the inside of it. I'm going to, once I get the case 
uh, the covers and everything put back on. I'm going to thread it up and do a video of a tour of the whole machine and the settings and the sewing and stuff like that and put it up. But I, I'd seen these around, but I'd never had a chance to get one, and I recently did. So it, it was really fun to work with, and it's really a lot stronger and better built than than I thought it would be with the you know the cast aluminum and the steel some still have uh, metal gearing and steel shafts and iron forks and stuff like that so looks real good thanks thanks for uh, thanks for watching and keep an eye out for the sewing demo of the machine when I get it put back together good day